Have you heard about the rise of digicams? Well this week, I want to try it out and use a digicam for the entire week instead of using my phone to take photos and videos. Digicams have been making a huge resurgence, and it's clear why. First, who doesn't love trying to capture a 90s film aesthetic and make your life look like a coming of age movie? Plus, I think I'll take any opportunity to try to separate myself from my phone. My screen time is so embarrassing, it's off the charts. My very first camera, and really the first piece of technology I owned all to myself, was a digicam just like this that I got in the third grade. I didn't have a phone because iPhones weren't even invented back then, so this digicam was my life. I carried it around with me everywhere and snapped cute photos that I still have to this day, and I direct little 15 second silent films because it never shot in sound and it could only do 15 seconds on the playground. So when I saw a digicam up for sale for $5, I knew I had to snag it. I've always wanted one of these fancy looking cameras with all the adjustment buttons where you can really focus on becoming a better photographer through manual photography. And it even has a screen that moves in all the versatile positions that you see a lot of YouTubers use. And I was really excited to have such a fancy camera, even if it is 14 years old. Still, this is pretty fancy and the cost of barrier to owning one of these isn't too high. When it was released in October 2009, this Canon G11 cost $411. Now let's go over three benefits of using a digicam for the entire week and what I've learned from this experiment and then let's talk about some drawdowns. First, the barrier to entry is not too high to own one of these cameras. People sell their digicams for affordable prices all the time on eBay, thrift stores, or on online forums like Nextdoor, which is where I found mine. It is pricier on eBay with the resurgence of digicams because of things like TikTok, but you should ask your relatives if they have any laying around in their junk drawers. My dad had his old digicam too, and this cost me in total $5 for the camera and $16 for a new battery and charger. The second benefit for spending a week using my digicam instead of my phone is it allowed me not to be on my phone quite as much. I absolutely love taking pictures everywhere I go, but I always get distracted by the inevitable notification. I even got less screen time on my camera itself by closing the display and using it more like a film camera. I didn't check or review the photos in the moment, and as a result, this made me more present and it also made me excited to see what I had captured later on. I started to do this in the second half of the experiment when I felt like I could even take it one step farther and be a little more analog than digital. I looked around more and as a result, I experienced more and I got to live in the moment. So I really, really enjoyed this about the Digicam. My friends and I went to the Huntington Gardens and it was a perfect place to take photos with this camera. I'll show you some example shots now. But I really enjoyed living in the moment, being with my friends, not being on my phone, which can come off a bit disrespectful at times when you're looking at your phone, even if you're taking a photograph. So when I have my camera, it's for the express purpose of taking photos, and I'm not distracted by something else. These photographs are all completely unedited to show you just how they come out straight from the camera itself. And now I want to go over the third benefit of using a Digicam. The third thing I grew to love about using a digital camera is that it has a super unique look. Sure, a lot of the shots come out blurry, and I think they'll get better once I become better at photography myself, but some of the shots were really cool and I could see myself using them for my future album covers. I love using pictures I've taken for my album covers. My album art for the song Cottagecore I actually took on a digicam in Germany. On my very first digicam from elementary school, I took this photo in 2015. So I've been a fan of using digital cameras instead of phones or higher quality cameras for a very long time. The quality is still surprisingly high and it makes for a great grainy effect in your photography. And I love making music with a sense of nostalgia as well, so I feel like the images pair super nicely with my music style. And if you want to check out my songs and my photographs, just search Sophia Sweet, that's S-O-P-H-I-Y-A, Sweet, on Spotify or Apple Music, or click the link I'll leave below for a playlist with all of my sweet jams. After that shameless plug, the fourth thing I love about the Digicam that I think you would enjoy is that it will make you a more intentional photographer. Much like someone shooting with film, the Digicam takes effort to take out and get set up. 
there's a few moments of buffer when the camera is loading, so I'm less likely to pull it out of my pocket to take a random photo. Instead, I think a bit more, and I have to put a bit more effort into what I'm taking a photo of. I like having to be more intentional. Another benefit of this is digital minimalism. I'm always snapping pictures on my phone, I mean hundreds, and these add up. It takes a lot of time for me to transfer these photos from my phone, to my computer, to my two hard drives for backup, and I greatly prefer both being more minimalistic in the quantity of photos I create, lending to a better quality. And the fact that these are all stored on a memory card instead of on the cloud or on my phone means I can easily swap this out when it gets full, saving me loads of time and stress versus having to transfer them from my phone. Now that we said all these positive points about the Digicam and why it's resurging again and how it could be a great photo tool for you, here are some downsides I ran into while replacing my phone camera with this Digicam for a week. The first is the biggest downside. Digital cameras are not allowed everywhere, whereas phone cameras are less conspicuous and generally well accepted. I was invited out to the Genesis Invitational Golf Tournament, and I was super excited at the idea of being able to photograph Tiger Woods with a proper zoom function instead of my iPhone 11, which gets a little blurry. However, the event rules prohibited any form of digital camera, point and shoot, or anything higher grade than basically a phone. So concerts and other events like that can have rules like this. The portability and widely accepted phone camera wins for this round. I resorted to the old fashioned way of creating sketches and paintings to capture events. No, I'm just kidding. The phone was okay, but I really did wish I could have used my camera. The second and last drawdown I noticed this week is that because Digicams have one purpose, to capture photos and videos, they have a more obvious sense of presence and thus warrant more attention. When going out to dinner with my friends, I honestly felt really weird whipping out a big camera to take pictures of our food. It felt a bit silly, and I felt self-conscious about it. Also because I had just met some of my friends' friends there, but one of them even had a Digicam too, so that was pretty coincidental and funny. But still, there is this sense of purpose attached to the Digicam, like, ooh, I, I have the big camera out now, and it can feel a bit invasive, which is the last thing I want people to feel. It does not take photos photos well in low light as quickly either, so that sense of process can also be a big drawdown. Getting the shot when all everyone wants to do is eat can be awkward. It can be hard in the moment to get fast photographs. That's why most of these were boy. I was rushing. Overall, I think a Digicam is definitely worth adding to your pile of stuff if you enjoy getting a nice old-fashioned look. It's definitely not a necessity, but it has been super fun to experiment and replace my phone with one for a week. I would love to know your thoughts about the Digicam. Do you have one? Do you think it's worth it to buy one? I definitely think if you could find one for like 21 to 50 dollars it could be a really fun investment especially if you want to get off your phone i think that the resurgence of digicams is directly linked to how complicated phones can make our lives sure they do a lot to simplify it but it can become such a time warp getting on your phone checking notification and then seeing that you've been on social media for the past like three hours so i'd love to know your thoughts about that it's obvious that people have this sense of nostalgia because things seem to be so complicated. Whatever era we're living in, we always think, oh gosh, wasn't life so much better in the 90s? And maybe it was because maybe there was less going on. I don't know, I was just a wee child back then. But it's been wonderful to try this out. I definitely think it's worth it to take a shot at it literally <laughs> and try your hand at some digital camera photography you'll be surprised your older relatives in your lives may have something similar to this digicam an old gopro like this 15 years old laying around in a junk drawer somewhere or someone on next door could have it and you can get lucky and find one and if you do please let me know i'd love to check out your photography and what you're up to I mentioned my song Cottagecore earlier. I linked in my bio all my music. I make it with this microphone my grandma got me like 10 years ago. It's still running strong. Um, and I just love Cottagecore and making music that could go along well with picnics. So 
please check it out if you like sweet, sweet jams. And I also made an accompanying coloring book that you could color while you listen. Um, and there are dogs with boots. So if that's your kind of thing, this is also linked below or it is on Amazon. Cottage color coloring book. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate your support and I hope to see you next week. I'll see you soon and stay sweet.